Hi everyone, welcome to my talk. My name is David Shangerton and I'm a customer success engineer at Looker. Today we'll be talking about multiple Looker instance workflows. The three things I want to cover is when is it recommended to have additional Looker instances? In other words, what are the pros and cons of managing multiple instances? Number two, provide a best practice framework for the promotion of LookML code and content. And three, demonstrate a live example of a basic workflow automating content and code promotion between instances. Before we jump to Looker, it's helpful to understand how release management is done in traditional software development. The best practice in system and administration advises isolating the various activities occurring concurrently in at least three separate environments. Development, this is where developers commit code, conduct experiments, fix bugs, and of course, make mistakes. Staging, also referred to test or QA environment, is where tests are run manually or through automation and due to complexity can consume a lot of resources. This is used as a mixing ground to review changes. Production is where value is created for the customers and or the business. This is a highly visible environment and should be as error-free as possible. This view emphasizes that all these activities should not occur in the same environment. In Looker terms, this means compartmentalizing development functions to keep them separate from analytical functions. Before we look at multiple instance workflows, let's first remind ourselves how Looker development works in a single instance. Looker uses Git for version control for each project. Developers can modify LookML code and not impact other users until those changes are vetted and deployed to the production branch. Development is performed by LookML developers who make those changes in their dev mode, which can either be a personal or shared branch for collaboration. When developers are finished making those changes to the project, they may then create a pull request, have that code reviewed, and deploy those changes to the production branch, at which point it's then visible to all business users. On the content side, looks and dashboards, these are not stored in the LookML, but instead reside in the internal database along with all the metadata of the application. Because content is built on top of the LookML model, changes to the underlying names of LookML objects, like a field name or a view name, can break existing content. Once LookML changes are ready to be pushed to production, developers can then use the content validator to list all content that has broken LookML references and update them. Because developers can view the entire Looker instance in their dev mode, a separate development environment is usually not required. However, the simplicity of a single environment does have its drawbacks as there will be on occasions, however minimal, where content could be broken. On the other hand, having additional instances would allow for content validation to occur in a non-production environment, thus ensuring no downtime for managed content. It would also allow for isolated tests to prevent any reports or subsequent analysis from grinding the production instance to a halt. Now that we understand how Looker manages Git and content in a single instance, we can move on to understand the benefits of having additional instances. Some key questions to help guide you would be, how important is a fast release to your business? For example, should new ex explorers and content be released to your end users on a daily or monthly basis? Is it acceptable to have temporary downtime while content is being fixed, or do you always want a set of managed content that's always functioning? In terms of testing, do you want to test all content, including user-defined content? Are you going to be testing query performance, SQL validation, and new features in isolation? And last, the requirements, Git and the Looker API. We will go deeper into these questions and other factors to think about in the following sections. The most common reason to have multiple instances is the ability to push LookML code to production and make changes to the content at the same time. By doing this, you can ensure 100% uptime of content. This is because the processes of the development cycle can be addressed in other environments. For end users, content will always function as expected. This is important for global use cases where business users will be running queries at all times of the day. Having non-production instances is also ideal when experimenting with instance-wide features in isolation, like turning off beta and labs features, trying out new authentication protocols, and a new data group caching strategy. Another reason to have additional Looker instances is to have more control over the LookML development cycle, specifically which code is promoted to production with specific release branches. Because no LookML development will occur on the production instance, there will be very low risk for any errors, broken content, or unperforming queries to surface for business users. It also allows for more discrete provision of access. Users can have pared down roles in different environments for different purposes, 
which will thus provide better security. For example, a non-developer can perform user acceptance testing in a QA environment rather than acquiring edit permissions in the production environment. Instances can also be set up to point to identical database schemas, but with dummy data used for development and performance testing. This is relevant for large Looker deployment, where it would be beneficial to test Lookamo code changes and run more thorough tests without impacting performance on the production instance. If you choose to have multiple instances, this will incur an additional adoption cost of setting up the environments and linking them together. It will take some time to plan and develop a robust release cycle. However, once this is set up, the pace of development should amount to that of a single instance setup. A common misconception about multiple environments is that they result in slower development. While the speed of, to deliver new features to end users will indeed be staged, overall productivity should be sustained if it is implemented correctly. In other words, LookML development does not stop once code reaches QA. Developers simply move on to the next project to tackle. The key factor in retaining the same speed of innovation is having the necessary resources to roll out a multi-instance setup. Having a team of developers who are familiar with the Looker API and Git is a prerequisite. Otherwise, the many layers will simply cause an obstruction. In cases where the skill set is absent, a single instance that is well managed will be better suited. Let's move on to how a sample release cycle would look like with three instances. First, we're going to examine the LookML side. In this example, we will see, we'll be leveraging the new Looker feature, Advanced Deploy Mode, which allows you to point the production mode to any Git reference instead of only the head of the master branch. This can be deployed via the Looker API or Git Deploy Webhook and will require only a single Git repository rather than the multiple Git repositories historically required. Starting in the dev instance, developers work on new features and bug fixes. They create pull requests, and when pushing their commits to master, once those are approved, those changes will go into the master branch, where eventually the release engineering team will cut a release branch and deploy that to the production mode of the staging instance. The staging instance is when all the tests are run. Development typically does not occur here. Once all the tests have passed, the release engineering team will then deploy this branch to the production instance. Content, on the other hand, is not version controlled. Managed content can be created in environments upstream and leveraging the Looker API and open source tools, such as Gazer or Looker Deployer, can be promoted across instances. In this example, we will create the managed content in the dev instance. The release engineering team will then push the content downstream to the staging instance where they get QA tested and validated against the LookML release branch. Once content is ready to be shipped, the release engineering team will then push the content to the production instance at the same time they deploy the release branch. We can generalize the key players involved in managing the development process to three distinct teams. Developers will be primarily working on new features and creating and editing managed content in the dev instance. They will be working in Git branches and pushing those updates to the master branch. Release engineering will take those latest commits and create a release branch cut from master on a regular cadence. Using Looker's API, they will promote LookML and content across instances. Testing will be done in the staging instance to validate new and existing content and run any instance-wide tests. Putting it all together, the process will look like this. LookML development happens in our dev instance via the usual pull request process. Any CI CD tool can happen before merging to the master. Once a release is ready to be cut, release engineering will deploy the branch to the production mode of the staging instance. Any new or edited content will also be pushed to staging. Once all the tests have passed, the final step is deploy content and LookML to the production instance at the same time. Now let's jump into a demo. OK, we'll be doing a mock workflow of updating LookML and content from our dev instance to staging and then to production. We'll be using the BigQuery public data set, in this case, the Moonfaces data set, and we are currently in our dev instance. So the dev instance is davids.lookersandbox.com, and I am in my personal dev branch. So let's say as a developer, I want to close an incoming request to add a new field. Let's say it needs a new dimension. So I'll go ahead and create that. Save that, validate the lookML, and make a commit. Now, before I can merge this to master, 
I need to open up a pull request and first run some data tests to ensure that the model is still correct. So I'll run the tests. The tests have passed and open up a pull request. And let's say this closes request one, two, three. Now this is typically where a manager will review the code changes before merging them. And you can have any CI CD tool here to help you um, with workflow configurations such as GitHub Actions. Some of the good uh, open source tools we have available such as Spectacles for SQL validity tests and LAMS for a style guide and linter to enforce uh, LOCAML rules. We're gonna pass over that in this demo and we're just going to merge this pull request. Now, if I go back to my model and I exit my development mode, I can see that my new field is now in master in the production branch. And that is because we've set up a webhook to push any commits coming in. Uh, this will deploy them to the production branch of the Looker instance. Okay, we are now ready to deploy our Lookamall changes from our dev instance to our staging instance. Before we jump into the technical aspect of making this change, it's helpful to remind ourselves of how we've integrated with Git across our various instances. So our dev instance has a read and write deploy key, while our QA and production instances are read only. And this is essentially to ensure that we can lock down development only in our dev instances, while staging and production won't be allowed to write to the Git repository. Okay, back to the technical aspect. Let's say our release engineering team is ready to cut and push our new changes to our staging instance. The first thing we'll need to do is create a new release branch. I'll call it release 1.14, and I'm going to create it from master. I'll push that branch to the remote. And now it is ready to be used uh, with the deploy ref to production endpoint or via a webhook. In this case, we'll be using the Python SDK to deploy this change. So I'm going to get into my Python shell. And I will run this script. And I will point it to my staging environment. using the latest release branch. So this has passed. I can see my production mode has been set to release 1.14. And now I can go back to my QA environment. So if I look, this is my staging instance. I don't have any new fields yet. If I refresh, there's my new field. So this is where in this instance, QA is done. Content validation against any LookML updates for the new content can be checked, which can be done either programmatically with the API or manually with spot checks. We can check for query performance, load testing, and any instance-wide features as this is our mixing ground before moving on to production. Okay, we're ready for our final step. All of our tests have passed in our staging environment, and we are now ready to deploy our updates to LookML and content to our production instance. So our release engineering team is going to run this bash script, which uses the deploy ref to production endpoint and leverages Gazer, which is a command line tool for Looker content management to move content across instances. So we're going to run this script 
and our source host will be our staging environment. And our destination host will be a production. And our release branch will be release 1.14. So what this script will do is it will iterate over each folder defined in my folder config JSON file and use Gazer to export the content locally from our staging environment into a specific release branch folder locally, and then import that content to the production instance. So our folder config is just a, a JSON file that has the mapping of folder IDs for each folder across the instances, as these will not be static. And we're using jQuery here um, to export the JSON locally and then import our looks and dashboard to production. Now we're keeping a local version of all these content JSON files locally, uh, which is useful to have a snapshot in the case of the need to, re to revert. And the same process can be used to migrate content up and downstream across instances. So now that our script is complete, if I go to our production instance, refresh the lookML, I can see we have our new field here. And if I look at our staging environment, for example, our moon folder with our content here and go to our production environment and refresh, I will see the same content exists on both instances. To review, the advanced deploy mode is a new looker feature which allows developers to point production mode to any Git reference. There are also two additional features that will assist in the multi-instance workflow. Dashboard slugs are a property that can be set by the API on any given dashboard. This will allow links to dashboards to be tested and remain the same across instances. LookML dashboards and user-defined dashboards can also be connected with new endpoints to import and sync dashboards. This will allow developers to leverage Git to promote content. I hope you found that helpful and thank you for joining me today.